What up, Kings fans, and welcome back to On The King's Dime. Not long to go now until the start of the new season. We have had our first hit out, our first preseason game against a Hill Select team we beat, 109-67. Uh, to 67. Not the highest caliber of opposition, but it was good to see the guys get a good hit out. There wasn't any footage of that game. There was just a few little uh, stories from the Facebook, the Sydney Kings Facebook, so... Good stuff for all those guys who have managed to get out there and watch that. We didn't actually get out to see that. We were busy and couldn't cover that one. Uh, the Boomers obviously crashing out. Absolutely heartbreaking disappointment. Our hearts were just ripped out. Uh, didn't even get a medal, just finishing fourth. You know, it pains me to even think about it. Just some of those guys over there, they played their hearts out. It was a really, really good campaign until the Spain and the France game. Finishing up fourth, which was a bit disappointing for Andrew Bogut and Will Weaver. Obviously, he will, they both will be coming back down under. Hopefully in time for the start of the new season. Maybe they'll get a couple of preseason games in, but the boys have been working in the gym. Now, this is the second part of the scoring video. We're going to go through the rest of the team. If you haven't watched that first video, go back and watch that part one of our scorers. Uh, we, break, we broke down all of the guys. We had uh, mainly the, sort of the bench guys and then Daniel Kickett. We're not really sure who's going to start in that power forward spot with that Lucas Walker signing. So we'll wait and see what happens there. We've got the rest of the team. Uh, if you like, share, and subscribe, we're going to be bringing you a lot more content all the way up until the start of the new season. There's plenty more to get through the season previews. Uh, we're going to be doing an over-under this year. Uh, we're going to take last year's win totals and then uh, make an over-under prediction and kind of predict a little bit more about the league. We're going to try and talk more about matchups and looking at other teams around the league and match how we match up against them with this new roster of ours. Now, if you haven't liked, share, and subscribe this video, uh, we're going to get straight into it. So first guy up is Jay Sean Tate. Yeah, so Jay Sean Tate, if you haven't watched that video we did, go back and watch that because it was a really interesting look at his early career, his college stuff. Um, there are a few high school t uh, mixtapes there too. Super powerful in high, high school. A real bouncy character. Um, a guy that can dunk off one foot too. If you see here, that's a, that's a nice little drive and dunk. Dangerous in transition. Uh, really powerful guy. Like, like out at the top of the key, he's going to get, if he's sort of, you know, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, he's going to juke and go by guys in the NBL and really finish over like a powerful finisher. You don't kind of see the three fours in the NBL that are really, really powerful. Guys like um, Ty Wesley... Webster, you know, guys like that. Who, who else? Tariko White. Um, not not really predominantly known for their old, like their powerful game. You see there, he sort of gets the board, uses his body. He's really savvy at using his body. So defenses are going to kind of struggle to contain him, I think. He's going to play a lot of three. He's going to sit out on the corner. He's going to get downhill to the basket. If he, you know, if Brian, if Andrew, Brian Bowen, Andrew Bogert is handling in broken plays, We've got so many cutters on this team, and yet again, he's another super strong cutter out of the corner off the weak side. There's a nice catch and you know, good sort of pump fake and finish. Just looking at some of these other clips here, he can shoot a three ball. Look, his three ball is not going to be reliable. If it's if it's great, then it's going to be good, but I, I don't think it's going to be super reliable. Here's in summer league. I'm really surprised you know, an NBA team didn't pick, pick him up and put him in the G League. Maybe he wanted to continue on playing professional basketball but yeah if, go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it he's going to be a powerhouse on this team now Didi Luzada we also did a video for Didi super impressed with how he looks um, especially at the World Cup he had a pretty good World Cup a few sort of little errors here and there he, he got some good game time which was good to see he's, he'll be tuned up and ready to go he is in the country we saw him at the King Select game I'm wondering if people are going to really underrate him and going to look at him and just think, oh, you know, the usual sort of 6'5 shooting guard. Um, a 30, 32 pick or 33 by Atlanta traded to the Pelicans. This guy is a pretty high pick and Pelicans fans and Brazil fans essentially were emailing us and sort of saying, hey, make sure you, you show a lot of clips of this guy because, you know, we want to watch him play and more international eyes on the NBL is going to be great for the league. Um, great for our content and great for our fans. It's good to see more guys wanting to watch the Kings with guys like Lozada, Nexstar. Um, comparing him to Brian Bowen, I think he's going to be a lot better. He's a much better, much more reliable three-point shooter. He can create his own shot, which is good. He can create on ball for others. So I think there's going to be scenarios where we use him as the dedicated point guard where we take Lish and we're off the floor. We can run lineups sort of, you know, really tall, small, tall, small lineups of guys that are 6'5 and up. It'll allow us to have that real, really good roster balance to integrate our, you know, sort of thicker guys like Jay Sean Tate. Are really like we've got a lot of good horizontal spacing this season. 
which we didn't really have last season. Adnan would come off the bench. It wasn't great. Pano kind of, was, you know, as we said in part one, like he really wasn't great off the bench. Brian Bowen was a little bit tentative. You know, he had a lot to play for going into the draft last season. Um, whereas Lazada's already been drafted. Like I said that in the video, he's already been drafted. He's ready to go. He's ready to impress. He's basically going to use, I'd say he's going to use this as a showcase to say, Pelicans, bring me back whenever you're ready because I'm going to be ready to play NBA. Um, he'll work well with Lish. He'll work well when Lish is off the floor. Last year, basically, we had nobody to replace Kevin Lish's perimeter defense off the bench. Jerome Randall, bless his heart. Tried his heart out. Um... Yeah, I don't know what more I can say. I think he's going to be a real talent, real underrated guy. We haven't heard much buzz. Nobody's kind of really saying, Dito Zara, like, he looks like he's going to be the goods. I think he's going to come in and be an underrated guy, really come off the bench and work hard. Now, moving along to Andrew Bogut. I don't think this really needs much uh, needs much explaining. He's going to finish plays. He's going to be a lob, lob threat. Transition scorer had there and an on-ball creator. Like, on-ball creator probably could be in... Uh, in yellow i think we could, i'll change that to yellow as i as i make the video because he definitely is an on-ball creator for us if you have a look at here he's he's post scoring last year i did not expect him to really bring out the post scoring he kind of flourished as in that role he he really brought out his personality as you see back and down rob Lowe, probably one of the poorer perimeter defenders in the league the taipans did not have a good season last year but look at that nate jawa basically you know, had the position, had the power on him, but sort of backing through, finishing there. That's a nice lob finish there. He's going to finish plays. You know, he's handling them. It's going to be really interesting to see what Will Weaver does with him this season because Andrew Gaze, I feel like, tried to create more sort of high IQ offense with him, but we didn't quite have the weapons. It was, it was a little bit sort of janky now and then that's a nice pass from kyle adnam kyle adnam couldn't really come off the bench and just run dedicated pick and roll we've got a few more guys off the bench this season who can do that but yeah again like that was a nice sort of just pull out a floater pull out a sort of lefty hook floater he's always going to get that one dribble into the post if he's gonna if he's got a step on his guy but have a look at this this is just a little hazy shimmy no you, you don't want to put your hand up i'm going to score over the top of you with my weak hand of his right hand again more driving to the lane that's beautiful not sure how much he's he's going to have a role to sort of do that this year that's nice sort of one step finishing underneath um i'm just wonder how much juice has been taken out of him with the season last season he looked very fresh at the start sort of towards the end of the season he started to dip a little bit that's a huge lob there that's going to be nice casper Ware is going to be tossing lobs i think diddy's going to toss lobs We've got a lot of creativity in the uh back or in the front court rather this season a lot of sort of finishing in the front court which is going to be great um last season yeah like he looked really fresh at the start of the season at the end of the season he kind of tapered off a little bit and then went over to the u.s to play to stay tuned up which was good to see probably i don't think i don't see him doing that again next season i i really don't think his body was kind of up to it and then in the world cup you know he he worked hard he was a real piece but he, you know in the international scene and at the super high levels you can see he's kind of lost that one step but he makes up for that with some of this finishing was superb like i did not expect again i did not expect him to bring these finishes out and you know his personality flourished like his basketball personality flourished from where he was at the warriors and how his nba career finished he was able to bring this stuff back out and it made him a much better player and now this is what i kind of wanted to show you sean long has gone to melbourne like i think perth's pretty much the same team sean long has gone to melbourne with Melo trimble he monstered sean long last season like there was a few games few of those games where they destroyed him in the post and defensively too so i'm not looking at melbourne thinking oh that's great pickup sean long like i'm looking at that thinking okay sean long's got to get better against andrew bogut so we're gonna to have to see what andrew bogut does you know whether sean long kind of raises his game and tries to get uh tries to get better against bogut we're gonna to have to see that we we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't go through these highlights without this that sweet behind the back against the i think he had two in the same same game basically nice behind the back just downhill don't even put your hand up I'm getting all the way to the hoop. And if you let him get into that, you know, one dribble, get to the hoop here. This is another nice finish there. David Anderson, not happy. Look at <laughs> blowing up. It was a little bit of a lucky continuation there. But this is probably my favorite play from last season from him. Have a look at the, the leap on this dunk, like bam, and the stare down. 
Uh, good way to finish off Andrew Berger. Yeah, he's going to clean the glass, lob threat, back down post scorer, and a good passer on ball. Um, super important again this season. Now we've got uh, Kevin Lish, the stud. Kevin Lish, absolute. Just a fantastic season last season. Really, really unlucky not to get higher kind of accolades in Defensive Player of the Year. I think if Andrew Bogut wasn't there, he would have easily won Defensive Player of the Year. His defensive work on the perimeter last year was fantastic. That was a beautiful screen assist there. His shooting was excellent. Just an absolute stud as Andrew Gase. He is a stud. Um, the leader, our workhorse, perimeter man, him and Diddy are going to be an absolute menace if they play a lot of minutes this season. Um, able to rotate. Look at that. Just a little, couple of little jukes. Like last year, he was our only guy that could really create off the dribble. You know, he's a, kind of the only guy who could spot up. And if you see, this is kind of some stagnant stuff. And then where, like, where are you going? Why are you leaving Kevin Lynch in the corner? That's terrible. Um, he just knocks that down easily here again in the corner. He loves a, loves a three ball from everywhere. He can get to the hoop. He's an ISO shot creator too. We didn't have any really any other guys who can cut. That's a beautiful cut and great dime by Bogut. We didn't really have those guys. Another fantastic dime again there. We didn't have those guys last year and he was bailing us out and he looked fried by the end of the season too. Like he took on a lot of the workload. We've, we've cleaned that up. We've cleaned that part of the roster up with a couple of guys. Kiwani Kiwani I think is going to be important as well. A nice little fake cut there. That's beautiful. Um, what more can you say? Like, let's just sit back and watch some of these highlights. Who, if, is Brad Newley gonna? You know, why are you closing out to Brad Newley? He's a not a not as good a three point shooter as Kevin Lish. Why are you leaving him in the corner on the wing again? That's poor defense. Um, and again, just catch and shoot, splash. That's superb. Um, have a look at this in the corner. Where, like, where is the defense? And have a look at how chewy these um, these Adelaide rims are, man. And then again, like, he leaves his guy again in the corner. What are you doing? Adelaide's rims, man. Like, upgrade your rims. They're terrible. They look like rec center, like down the park type of rims. Um, but, yeah, that's a nice finish there. I don't know what else we could say, honestly. Like, let's just, again, let's just sit back and watch these highlights. Look at that. This is the chewiest rims I've ever seen. Um, dangerous in trenches. Brad Newley, that headband game here, yeah, that was fantastic. We're going to see a little bit of that up next. Um, what else? Corner. Loves it in the corner. Three ball. Bang. Um, good cutter. And mid-range. I would like to see him, actually, this is, a, this is a good point. I'd like to see him this year, you know, juke off a screen and then shoot some elbow jumpers this season. Last year, we didn't have very many scorers outside of... You know, your three ball, your Andrew Bogan in the post. Um, creators like Newley in transition, David Ware would come out and sort of screen a little bit. Ca like, Casper Ware is going to have to shoot off a screen. Like, we'll go through that obviously later. Like, he's going to have to get screen assists. Bogut's going to be doing a lot of running around. We've got a lot of horizontal spacing guys like um, Jay Sean Tate. Have a look at that. Where are you going? Just leaves him for dead there, breaks his ankles and knocks down the three. Um, again filthy filthy man beautiful stuff um i think this stuff's uh against new zealand nice backdoor cut there um yeah he was fried by the end of the season it was a shame we got some more reinforcements this season which is good uh not even like just from a standing start just drains a three um again creates put your hand up uh, and then nice little kick it Andrew Bogut to Lish. Bang. Thank you. So, yeah, like nothing more can be said about Kevin Lish. He's just a phenomenal athlete. He's a phenomenal player. Now on to Brad Newley. Probably one of my favorite players from last season. Just an absolute menace in transition. Just a beast. Anytime he had his shoulder directly in line with a defender to the bucket. Like if you have a look at some of this, gets his shoulder in there and finishes. Like his, his ability to finish last season was just magnificent. Like it was great to watch. We didn't do a good enough job getting him into these trend, uh, transition spaces, getting him downhill to the hoop. A few times, like he would resort to his three ball, where his three ball was was quite good at the start of the season. And then it really fell off a cliff. It's solid. Look, it's solid enough. I don't think like he had a problem last season where if his three ball wasn't dropping, he would kind of just keep shooting three balls, and you would just be like, Brad, like pump fake. The guy's closing out. Pump fake and get to the hoop. Like that's your shtick. Like backing down. Really kind of, he's, he's going to mirror Jay Sean Tate this season. And if, look at this, so dangerous in transition. Just don't 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 even cut to the hoop, Brian. Like, you know he's bowing. He's going to finish 
Brad Newley every time. One of the strongest finish in the league. Again, the downhill scoring options. We've got passes uh, who can create at pretty much every position if you look at Andrew Bogut. And then you've got cutters. We've got guys, we're going to be doing a lot of sort of cutting to the hoop, passing back out, cutting to the hoop, passing back out, passing to Bogut at the elbow, and then finishing plays at the hoop. Have a look at this. He gets his shoulder to the basket. Reverse finish. Lovely. That was, was this his headband game? I can't see. I'm looking at a small video in the corner. Splash. Um, that headband game he had last season was, was fantastic. I think he had 28 points. I think it was a career high or something like that. Have a look at this. Finishing in traffic. That's beautiful to see. An array of finger rolls and finishes. Oh, a little creative off the dribble there. Nice. And gets the bucket and the foul. Uh, a little crossover move there. Jerome Randall. And then Andrew Bogut leaving him alone. That three ball, fairly solid. Um, I don't know if, you know, I don't know if we can say it's reliable. If we're going to be sitting here going, yes, Brad Newell, continue to shoot three balls. We're going to kind of be saying, like, look at this, getting to the rim, just scoring off a small, scoring on smaller guys. It uses that shoulder, uses that upper torso so well. Tosses it out, knocks down a three. Um... Yeah, I'm not not more not sure more we can say. Really, we can kind of finish it there and move on to. No, nah, let's actually no. Nah, let's let's continue to watch this. Let's continue to talk about. I'll wrap it on about this. This is headband game. Headband newly, um, knocking down that three. I'll just we'll just sit here and we'll watch this this footage. Again, a beautiful cut. Like Andrew Bogus is going to get so many dimes again this season if we get our spacing right. And if he cuts to the basket, again, shooting the three, get your hand up, your hand's not up, Brad Newley's going to rise up and make the three. He backs down again. Little hesitation in, out. That was quite nice. Um, settles for another three again, knocks it down. It was a fantastic game he played. We really destroyed Adelaide. And then backs all the way out, and it's just like, gets frolling. I think that was frolling, was it? Yeah, just gets him with a little hesitation. And again, like don't don't give him that much space to get to the hoop. Like you, you fight, fighting a losing battle in here again. This is a powerful dunk. Probably an N1 there too. Should get an N1 there. And then again, the cut, that little little flare screen and a cut. That's all he needs is uh, one step off the dribble. Now, the final piece of the puzzle, Casper Ware from Melbourne. Now, like let, let's start. From the, the end of last season, we, we bowed out to Melbourne. It was super disappointing. It's disgusting having to like, show you guys Melbourne highlights against Sydney. But the amount of down screens, one down screen, one dribble, pull up, bang. That's basically what beat us last season in most of the games. If you look here, like can create a shot over Kyle, Ad Kyle Adnam. Like, that, that's not too bad defense. Kyle Adnam's not the best perimeter defender. The six up five guys we have this season are going to defend that a little bit better. But here we go again. Pledger, high screen, one dribble, bang, pull up. Andrew Bogut's probably one of the best screeners we've got. One of the best screeners in the game. That's a nice little... He had, he had so many games. Like, I could have put together, you know, an hour's worth of footage. Like, 28 and 10, to, uh, 28, 5 assists, 28, 6 assists, 36 assists. Like, so many games. Which look like a little bit of travel there. But have a look at Boone here very high and like this is where he cooked Randall he is going to be super important this season like I wonder how he's going to go again high screen one dribble like pull up Andrew Berg is going to get a lot of action doing that again high screen nobody stepping up out to the perimeter like it's just endless how many times he just one dribble into a pull up three gets all the way to the hoop that's his shtick as well he's, he's, a, he's going to be our primary creator our primary Passer, I wonder how comfortable he's going to be off ball. A lot of holding the ball against Melbourne. I mentioned in part one of the video, if you watch something like Moller here, if you look at Moller standing in the corner again, a lot of he did a lot of standing in the corner in some of these clips. He'll just stand in the corner and Casper Ware will create, pulls up, hits the three. He was their main guy. I wonder how he's going to go this season, sort of easing into his role, whether it is primary on ball scoring or more all round because I, I feel like Jerome Randall started the season last year basically trying to score everything like you know I'm the primary scorer I'm going to score I want to put up 20 plus points a night by mid-season you saw Jerome Randall starting to make more plays where all oh, right I don't need to do this I've got Andrew Bogut I can do you know other things I can stand out on the perimeter I can make cuts I can he got mauled off ball a little bit um 
a few of his shot choices too like he'd pull up in the lane where it would be a three on two break and then he'd pull up at the foul line and just be like jerome like mate it's such a like he'd knock it down but you'd just be like hard in mouth like man that's just a, a poor option again high screen misses this and then just gets it back where where is everyone he's just going to knock that down from a uh, a set position look i'm i'm going to be really interested to see how he goes this season casper where a much better perimeter defender i didn't put any defensive highlights in here um because there weren't really like it's hard to get like you're gonna to have to go through full games um mainly a lot of his highlights online were scoring here again shows his, his ability to sort of turn like almost terminate a dribble a little little hezzy dribble and then drive to the hoop again high screen like how many times have we seen this high screen it's one step splash like we're going to utilize that a lot this season and if we get a lot if we get a little bit of movement into this team i'm wondering how he's going to go whether he's going to you know he's going to interact with that like that's that's a nice little floater in the lane little handoff from pledger um he casper where's the guy mainly i wanted to sort of talk a little bit about you know probably probably rabbiting on a little bit now this video is what i've been going for about 20 minutes um but yeah you you guys are going to want to see this you guys want to go see how if you're anything like me i didn't watch any any melbourne stuff at all last season i did not care an iota when we got knocked out and they play perth i was like i do not care about this game anymore so you know it was hard for me to sort of watch these games watch them score on the kings um melbourne i'm not a big fan of as a team oh, we have that rivalry with them which is which is very healthy it's very good a few sort of real bangers last season i guess this is the other thing have a look at this strip on mellow trimble like new zealand like melbourne have mellow trimble i'm pretty sure like i should should have researched it i'm pretty sure they have mellow trimble and sean long he had a few games where he cooked Melo Trimble for the type ends, man. Like, I'm not sure if Tr Trimble's the kind of perimeter defender that's going to work. We said Sean Long. Some of those Bogut videos where Sean Long was absolutely getting cooked by Bogut, really not able to handle him. A few, a few guys handled Bogut quite well last year. Brant. Um, I thought David Anderson played well against Bogut a few times last year. Nate Jawa was able to sort of use his beef, really get into his body and sort of really sap him of energy. Uh, I'm trying to think. Angus Brandt had a few good games. Kay had a couple of really good games against him. But Sean Long didn't have very good games against him. And having a look at some of this Casper Ware footage, Melo Trimble didn't. Again, high screen. Two in a row. High screen. Splash. Um, really sort of basic stuff. Um, but yeah, Melo Trimble. Oh, I'm, I'm, look, I'm putting it out there early. I'll say more in this. Like, have a look at that range. That's from, from way downtown. That was basically from Darwin he pulled up from. Um, yeah, so... I'm going to go all in and say that I'm not sure Melbourne are going to have a very good team this season. Like, if they're going to rely on Melo Trimble and Sean Long. Now, they've, they've scored a few points in their first couple of games. I, I'm saying I, I should should qualify that. I don't think they're going to play that well against us this season where they beat us 3-1 three, three, last season in the uh, season standings. But this season, it's going to be really interesting. Casper Ware has a lot, a lot to offer, a lot to show, and he looks really primed and ready to uh, give it his best. Um... Yeah, 30 a night. 30 a night, should we should we go for? Hopefully, like 20, 22, 23. We've got a lot more weapons on this team. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much every guy on the roster. Uh, I went through them all, rabbited it on. You know, there's a, there a few guys in there where they didn't really need too much in depth going into, like guys like Brad Newley, Andrew Broger doesn't need much uh, introduction. Obviously, his offense is going to be important this season. Kevin Lish. The stud, the stalwart of our team, he's going to be an absolute monster this season with Casper Ware. They're going to have to integrate. I don't see them really having many problems on the perimeter. We've definitely got guys like Tate and Lazada and even Kiwani we can go to to kind of mix it up, have some bigger guys out on the perimeter, give them a little bit more rest this season. Hopefully, down the end of the season, we're not going to fall in a hole. We're not going to sort of run out of puff. I felt like last season we ran out of puff a little bit. Not like the Boomers basically playing two games a night. For two weeks in the World Cup, they ran out of puff, which was a shame. Now, if you haven't already, like the video and subscribe. Really appreciate it. We do have a Patreon. It's above. Throw us some dollars if you want to see more content coming your way. We're definitely going to put those dollars all the way back into making more content. We're not just asking for money to, you know, ask for money for money's sake. We're putting that money back into hosting, hosting the podcast, uh, being able to get stuff to make more content. We're looking at ways to kind of incentivize what you get out of it. I think I'm going to be doing, I'm a bit of a stats nerd, so I'm going to be doing a lot more stats this season. 
bringing more in-depth stuff i'm maybe going to put that behind a paywall and sort of throw out little snippets here and there try and use twitter a little bit more to get some more advanced analytics out there that's the kind of stuff i'm into andrew's kind of more into the business side and the front office type stuff he's more into that so yeah we're gonna we're gonna really try and make that patreon work try and make something that's actually gives fans an incentive sort of give throw us some money sort of crowdfund our our um hosting and some stuff like that so yeah we really really appreciate it we really appreciate you guys if you've gotten this far thank you very much for watching the video we're going to be bringing heaps all the way up until the start of the new season and then try and bring sort of season previews and uh, season previews uh match previews and then match reactions like basically just as much content as we can do we're going to go all in on this this season so we really hope you enjoy it and of course we'll see you guys next time on the king's dime